hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel so today we are in canada at the ontario tech university in search of masters and phd opportunities but before we begin let's have some words from our sponsors today we're being sponsored by uni Aco. uni Aco is a well-known student accommodation service it provides affordable accommodation for students in over 10 countries around the world with over 3 million beds. So in case you're looking for accommodation, affordable accommodation, clean accommodation, close to universities, I think you should use this service. And of course, they have different range of accommodation, including studios, including ensuite, shared accommodation, depending on the one you're actually looking for. So no matter what your pocket is, you'd likely find an accommodation that suits you through Student Arco. There are also other kinds of services like um, no deposit, um, no university, no payment. There are cashbacks, there are Amazon vouchers, and other freebies you can get from Uni Arco. So please try as much as possible to use their service if you're looking for student accommodation globally and you wouldn't regret it. And of course, the link to Uni Aqua will be in the description box of this video. So please look at it and enjoy affordable accommodation for your studies. So let's continue. So at Ontario Tech, there are different courses here for different departments. And now I'll be looking at master's PhD opportunities for these departments. But before we proceed, let's look at the English language requirements. So a quick look at the English language requirements revealed that um, if you studied in the English language, for instance, for at least three years, you wouldn't have to submit any English language test. So you can get an English language exemption if you studied like your undergrad in an English speaking country. And I think this would also be verified like in your transcript or things like that. So you do not have to submit the IS or the TOEFL. So that's good news. But if you didn't study English language, then you have to um, do one of these, these exams. So that's clear. Let's move on. So you can see for the different courses, you can check for the funding requirements. For instance, let's see criminology. Of course, it's good to check the admissions requirements as well, the dates and things like that, and whether you need to contact a supervisor or not. So if it is not specified here, you can go through the graduate contact person or ask them a question and say, it wasn't written on the website, do I need to contact somebody or not? But make sure you do your own due diligence and check the website closely. And also the faculty page or the university um the course website itself, like this one, and see if anything was written about contacting a professor. If nothing was, you can just ask them one more time before you put in an application. So let's look for funding quickly. So for funding, we have different categories of funding. You can see here, there's something they call entrance scholarships. There's something called minimum funding package. There's teaching assistantships, research assistantships, graduate assistantships. So there are lots of them here, and yes, we can open one of the links and see what it entails. So let's look at the Graduate Student Awards and Funding. So it took me here to this page, and you can see Graduate Student Awards. Let's, let's look at this. Graduate Student Funding as well in form of GTAs and other things. So this contains external donor awards. This contains internal awards as well. And you can have a combination of both, actually, for your graduate studies. So let's look at this one. This is external awards. This is for domestic students. And I know majority of you are international students. So you check this closely and see. So even though this is closed, it might open soon. And this is for a particular department for AI related. This is the Popular Vineyard Scholarship opening soon as well next year. The Ontario Graduate Scholarship is actually open now. And it's worth 15,000 or I think 5,000 per term. 
in the first place. So there are, these are different external ones and see whether you have to put in a different application or whether you are um, considered automatically. And for this one, I think you have to have admission first before you apply for it. We can always read that. But then go to this one. This one is often more straightforward. This university-based internal application that come in form of assistantship, studentship, and the rest of them. So there's a document here you might want to consult to see the different kinds of applications. The different kinds of internal university application you might want to look at. And look at here, the minimum financial um, assistance you get for the different courses. And one amazing thing about this university is that you can get from different sources to fund your entire studies and to give you enough for a stipend. You can see you can get up to 9,000, 16,000, um, and 18,000. But apart from this, what you call the minimum funding for graduate student. So this is what you get when you get in, that is the minimum. You can add other things. For instance, if you scroll down, you see different kinds of other pots of money, like the um, graduate, the Dean's Graduate Fellowship. So you can add this to that as well. The other small perks, you can also add to that as well. And I think what you should just do here is just check whether you need a different um, funding, um, you need a different application for funding, or you need your automatically considered. For most of the assistantships, you're automatically considered. But for some other small pots of money, you might need, um, you might need um, a different application. So let's put another one. Let's put the entrance scholarship. Entrance scholarship for graduate school. I think it was mentioned here. So I'm trying to discover what it's all about. Entrance scholarship, what does it entail? And let's see the amount of money as well. So this is the entrance scholarship. What between 3,000 to 4,000? So again, you can add this to what we've seen earlier, to the minimum we've seen earlier. This is the minimum we saw earlier. So by the time you add all these things of 4,000 here, 9,000 there, another 4,000 or 5,000 there, before you know, you're reaching close to 20,000 Canadian dollars to help you upset your um, living cost. So try it and see. And of course, we wish you Good luck with your application. And as I said, check with your own department. So this is criminology, for instance. Check with your own department and see the peculiar application requirements. So for instance, you could go to um, things like, let's say, maybe computer science, you know, and check as well. See whether you need to contact a professor and see which professor's interest align with yours. And of course, the applications requirements and the funding as well. We go to the funding section and you can see the different application the kinds of funding. And you go, of course, to the funding page we looked at there and see the one that suits you. And of course, if you have um, questions, there is a question bar here where you can ask the question about the course or applications requirements in general. Finally, I think an application fee might be required. Most Canadian universities require application fee for your, for your documents to be considered in the first place. Yeah, I know a number of people are worried about this because it's um it might be a lot of money for a number of people. But unfortunately, that's the that's the rule for most Canadian universities. But who knows? Engage with the department. Who knows? You might just get some kind of a waiver. I'm not promising you anything, but you could always engage with them and see if they are willing to like negotiate with you in the first place and that's it guys i hope this was useful fully funded masters and phd at the ontario tech university in canada and do not forget to book your accommodation with uni aco affordable international student accommodation provider with affordable rooms for students whether it's a studio whether it's an unsuit shared accommodation very close to university as usual, guys, we cannot wait to celebrate you. Start putting your documents together and I start applying. And I'll see you at the top sooner than later. So, bye-bye for now.